Hi there everybody, Michael Valenti here with the School of Self-Defense in Indianapolis and Will Smith just slapped the crap out of Chris Rock and I feel like we need to talk about it. So here's the situation, Chris Rock is making some jokes at Jada Smith's expense and if you actually pay attention to this, uh, Will Smith is actually laughing at the jokes until uh, Jada Smith seems to take uh, offense to one of the jokes and apparently that means it's time for the husband to step up and do something about it. Um, much to Chris Rock's surprise, uh, Will Smith walks up and boom, slaps the hell out of poor Chris Rock. And then Chris Rock uh, begins to kind of process and address what just went down. Um, and then Will Smith continues to yell from the crowd while uh, Chris Rock tries to kind of um, get the ceremonies back on track. Ultimately, with this situation, no one was actually really hurt. Um, I think really only egos were bruised. So I thought because there was no real like serious damage going on here, this would be a great opportunity to talk about some fundamentals of self-defense where we can look at what Chris Rock could have done better and some of the areas where Chris Rock actually handled this really well. So first, let's talk about the walk up. So Chris Rock obviously is making some jokes and Will Smith just starts walking right, right up to him. First and foremost, Chris Rock's posture is uh, not a good posture for uh, somebody coming at you this aggressively. Now, I'm sure Chris Rock was sitting there probably in a state of disbelief, not completely understanding what was going on. And if I was him, I probably would have even doubted that Will Smith would do something as stupid as assaulting someone on live television. But Chris Rock does put himself in a very dangerous position by putting his hands behind his back. This posture is oftentimes used as a means to show someone that you mean them no harm, that you are not threatened by them, or sometimes it's just a nervous position that people will put them into. However, it leaves you extremely vulnerable because it leaves your head open, pow, for a slap. Instead, if someone is coming at you aggressively, the first thing you should do is create a barrier between the two of you. Imagine that there's a line running down the center of your body that projects forward. We call that line the center line. And anytime someone is getting verbally aggressive or they're posturing aggressively at us, we want to put our hands on that center line, creating a barrier between the two of us so that they cannot deliver a straight line attack down that line. By eliminating the straight line shot, I force the aggressor to take circular shots to hit me. And because circular motions travel slower than straight line motions, by putting my hands directly on center line, I inherently give myself more time to respond to the attacker's assault. The other issue here is that as Will Smith walks up, there is no attempt to create space between the two of them. A fundamental rule when it comes to dealing with aggressive people, maybe they haven't attacked you yet, but they're posturing aggressively or saying aggressive things, is you always want to be all the way out or all the way in. What do I mean by that? Well, imagine a two arms length between you and your opponent. If you extended your arm, they extended their arm. I want to maintain that two arms length from my opponent at all times. That way, in order for them to hit me, they must move to me. As you see, there was this momentary pause here where Will Smith stops in front of Chris Rock. This is far too close for anybody acting aggressively as Will Smith is. Instead, the ideal stopping point would be about here for Chris. And if we're talking pure self-defense here, at this point, Chris Rock probably should have started moving back and maintained that amount of distance from Will Smith, even maybe just straight up running away um, and making a scene. But of course, you know, I, I don't think Chris Rock was even thinking this was going to happen. I, I, I It's very clear that he's in disbelief and a little bit of shock at what uh, Will Smith is doing right now. So that's what I mean by all the way out. You want to keep that distance from your opponent so that they can't reach you. The only other alternative is all the way in where their punches can be controlled. If you're standing in a kicking range or a punching range, like where you would stand to box, specifically this range right here, 
well, you're now in a prime position to get hit. So instead, if you cannot maintain that distance between you and your opponent, what you would then do is quickly bridge the gap so that you could control your opponent with basic grappling like judo or wrestling. I do think it's worth taking a moment to talk about ego in this situation because this entire situation is egos out of hand. As I stated at the beginning, you can clearly see that Will Smith is laughing at these jokes. He thinks they are funny. It's not until Jada gets upset, visibly upset at the joke that Will Smith decides he has to act. And this is some cultural egotism that really you have to throw out if you are going to be living a peaceful life. The fact is, if someone is making fun of you, they are just making fun of you. You are an adult. There is no reason why you should ever assault someone because they disrespected you or disrespected your wife. And if you think that position uh, makes a person a bitch to think about that, well, then you're remarkably immature and you don't understand how this world that you live in actually works. I would like to kind of dissect the end of this after the slap, how Chris Rock handles it because I think he actually handled it really, really well. For starters, after he gets hit, he does not immediately retaliate. He could have immediately retaliated. He could have immediately went in and started throwing punches. But I think he clearly can see by the fact that Will just turns around here and walks straight off. He can see that, that this was the end of the conflict and it would have caused more damage, more chaos, more disruption if he were to have then been like, you know, once again, uh, uh, kind of had a big ego and said, no, now I got to hit you back. Instead of playing this ego topping ego, Will Smith comes in, does something stupid, and Chris Rock checks his ego, recognizes the altercation is over, and allows it to be over. I also have to give credit to Chris Rock for taking this slap like some freaking like professional boxer because he gets hit and he rolls with the punch. He rolls with the hit. He turns his body as he gets struck. A lot of times, if someone is not used to being hit, they'll tend to rotate off of the head like this, which can cause serious uh, trauma to the neck and even brain trauma. Ideally, if you do have to be hit, you want to actually bend more at the waist the way Chris Rock is bending here. Now, I don't know if that was just a natural reflex or if he has any kind of prior training, uh, but either way, uh, that greatly decreased the impact of uh, Will Smith's blow. Then he immediately addresses it with a bit of a joke. You know, he says, Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. Which, of course, you know, he's shocked by this situation, but ever the showman, the show must go on, he just kind of continues hosting. I think he had every bit of an attempt here, or every bit of intent, rather, to continue hosting as he normally would. Uh, but then, of course, because Will's ego is out of control at this moment, Will has to go ahead and continue to speak up. So Will starts yelling from the crowd, keep my wife's name out of your fucking mouth. Chris Rock does what I think most people would tend to do here, which is he tries to kind of downplay it. He responds by saying like, like dude, this was just a joke about G.I. Jane. Now this is actually a flaw in his de-escalation attempt. So his initial response of like not not necessarily causing a big giant scuffle was good. He handled that with a lot of poise and grace and I respect the hell out of him. Uh, but then he moves on to a common mistake when it comes to de-escalation is he's trivializing the situation to the person who is upset. The thing to understand is most violence comes from one of four things, drugs, alcohol, a sense of fear or a sense of inadequacy. And as a general rule, you can only control one of these. You can't really control if the violent person is drunk or on drugs. Um, and hopefully you aren't living a life in a way that uh, makes people fearful of you. And clearly Chris Rock wasn't. Chris Rock was just like hosting the show. But that sense of inadequacy, that is where this violence has come from. That Chris Rock made a joke that made Will Smith feel inadequate so will decided he had to get physical in order to you know impose his dominance and that's kind of what's going on in his head so even though the situation the joke was very trivial it wasn't trivial to will smith and so it is a mistake in de-escalation uh, as chris rock is doing here in attempting to trivialize it he's like dude it's just a gi jane joke but will smith 
this is serious to him. For whatever reason, this is not trivial. And so by trivializing something that is very important to him, it's only going to increase the anger as we see next when Will Smith doubles down. And he emphatically says, keep my wife's name out of your mouth. And that is when Chris does exactly what he actually should do in this situation. He says, I'm going to, okay. When you are dealing with aggression that is stemming from a sense of inadequacy, all you really need to do is hand that person the, like, sense of superiority that they're looking for. Ultimately, that respect is... Um, it's an illusion. It's really unimportant whether or not someone has respect for you, especially if it's just a, a comedian on a stage. But of course, in Hollywood, there is a tremendous amount of egos. And the best thing you can do when somebody does have this huge ego is to just hand it to them and say, you know what? You are the biggest dog in the kennel. You are the, you know, you are the baddest dude in the bar. It's all yours. You can have it. Uh, because it's ultimately not very important to me. And so this end of the altercation that Chris Rock does here where he just says, oh, no, I'm not going to talk about your wife anymore. Um, is that is that what you wanted? That's really good de-escalation. So whereas, yeah, that is a uh, pretty dramatic situation because ultimately I don't think anyone was really damaged during that assault. I thought, and of course, you know, it's so public. I thought it'd be a great opportunity to talk about uh, of three just really important principles of self-defense. One, distance management. You want to be all the way out or all the way in. Two, covering your center line. If someone is coming at you aggressively, create that barrier. And three, check your ego. This would not have happened if Will Smith would have checked his ego at the door and now he has a giant black eye on his career because he slapped somebody because they made fun of his wife. If you enjoy this kind of content, which you clearly do because you made it to the end of the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up, click the subscribe button, and click the bell button so you can get notified next time I make a video. Also, if you're interested in coming to Train Self-Defense with me here in Indianapolis, all the information you need to get started is on our website, theschoolofselfdefense.com. I also offer online classes uh, via Zoom on Wednesdays. Once again, to sign up for those is on our website, theschoolofselfdefense.com. So until next time, everybody, I'm Michael Valenti with the School of Self-Defense. Fight on.